Level up your gaming experience with the Corsair One Small Form Factor Gaming PC, featuring water-cooled Intel 7th generation processors, M.2 NVMe SSD support, and liquid-cooled GTX 10 series GPUs. To learn more, just head to Corsair.com.
Well, there it is, Project Symbiote is done. I think this project took longer than any build I've ever done from conception to finish because I knew when Threadripper was coming out that I was gonna do a custom build. I told them I was gonna do a custom build at the uh, SIGGRAPH event, but before that I had already gotten this case and I was really kind of confused, like how am I gonna use this case? They didn't ask me if I would do a build in this case. I requested this case because it was so different and so unique, which really meant I had a clean slate and a canvas to start on. Typically you build in a case in a custom build, it's just a big rectangle and you've put a bunch of stuff in there and you try and come up with a theme. Usually it's just a colored theme, unless you're a modder, then you do some really cool and fancy shit to the case. But uh, I was really kind of like, how do I take a case with all these crazy angles and do a theme with it. Well, we, we sat here and we thought about it and Symbiote became sort of the theme because of the fluid that we're using. A lot of people have misidentified this fluid on social media and you guys should be following on Twitter and Instagram and all that because pictures of the progress of the build of this and some sneak peeks were up there. So definitely worth checking out. But a lot of people have misidentified this fluid as Mayhem's Aurora and it's not. It's not a copy of Mayhem's Aurora. It's not even the same chemical makeup as Aurora. This is, this is very cool stuff right here. And uh, it's not out yet though. This is the Primo Chill View and it should be out soon. I'm one of the testers for this and we've been testing it in three machines now, checking for fallout, checking for clogs, checking for temperature changes. And so far it's holding strong. Nick, your system's still running the green one, yep. right? Everything's still good with that one. It's been about a month. Over a month we've been running that. So far the color hasn't changed and it hasn't fallen out or dropped whatsoever because there's nothing to fall out. This stuff is not, has no weight to it. When you stop the build or you stop the, the pump from running, it all just stops where it is and it doesn't flow backwards. It doesn't fall. There's no weight to it. It's the trippiest thing you've ever seen. So definitely keep your ears to the ground for when that fluid's gonna come out. So huge thank you to Primo Chill for sending that and letting us test it. But obviously the star of this build is the loop. Right, so Performance Dash PC sponsored the loop. They sent me uh, all the fittings and stuff that you see. They sent me the blocks. They also sent me the pump reservoir combo from XSPC. And then Primo Chill sent me their new radiators, which they custom powder coated. They, they are the, um, the Eskimo, right? Eximo, Eximo radiators. And they're custom powder coated for this build. It, it, same thing with the fittings, the revolver fittings, the tops were all custom powder coated to match the gunmetal on the motherboard and the gunmetal that I painted on the case. And so we've got it all tied in nicely. So huge shout out for those guys sending that. Um, and then the other stuff I already had, like AMD sent the CPU and then I already had the 980 or the 1080 Ti's. I keep saying 980 Ti's. We keep going back like a year and a half. Why do I do that? Why do I do that, Nick? You're living in the 80s stuff. 80s? We're gonna go back to a Voodoo FX, Voodoo, <laughs> Voodoo 3. I remember those guys. Go back to a Voodoo 3 graphics card. 16 megabytes. But as I said, the loop is the star of the show. It looks very blue on camera. Uh, trust me, it's not blue, it's silver and uh, they're white LEDs. It's just white LEDs always look blue on camera, which makes the fluid look blue, but it's not. Your, your eyes definitely see this differently than it looks on camera. Um, I'm gonna probably be changing out the LED strip. I actually got this LED strip from AutoZone, from like the automotive lighting section. Basically, it's like the ricer aisle. I got it out of there as lighting to hold me by. It needs a warmer light though, so we'll be playing around with that. The loop was something I was really torn with. And here's why, because I started to bend all the tubes with a very traditional 45s and 90s and matched all the angles of the case. The problem was it didn't complement it. Nick and I were sitting there looking at it and I went, you know what? I've got this crazy idea because I had most of the loop already bent and done. I said, what if I heat the tube, the whole tube? And I start twisting it and compressing it and stretching it and putting kinks in it and, bul and bulges. And it started to look like, like veins, like, like it's a biomechanical thing. And so we started to play around with it and I started to put some stuff up on Instagram and, and Twitter. And, and immediately it was like getting shot down, right? It was like 50-50. It was like a love-hate. Yeah. And, and that's fair because Nick and I both were looking at this going, God, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, we're trying to envision the final product based on only a couple of pieces that were contrasting the very, the very abstract and very sharp like meticulous case that this is, right? All the angles are there for a reason. They're placed for a very specific look. And we were going against that look. We were going against the grain by coming up with these crazy bends. And some people on, on, on social media got mad. They were like, that looks like crap. And it looks like a bunch of failed bends, but believe it or not, those were harder to bend than any standard bend for me. I burned the hell out of my fingers too, because I had to bend the, the whole tube. The entire tube from end to end had to be heated. And I even had gloves and I was still burning my hands because I was twisting and pushing and stretching and, and yanking and, and I was doing a lot of really, well, looks like suggestive stuff with it, but that's what we ended up with. And it looks like a vein system, right? Symbiote, 
it's infecting the computer. And that's what we wanted. So we went extremely against the case aesthetic with a very biomechanical looking interior where the inside almost looks like it's alive, right? You've got the conduit here, uh, what Nick calls it conduit. I call it split loom, but whatever. We've got a very almost matrixy looking tubes and stuff in there to where the inside of the case is just completely contrasted by the exterior. And that tied it all in. So we were having to just go, okay, we have to trust our vision. We have to trust that it's gonna look the way we hope it's gonna look when it's done. And once we filled it, we were just like, this was the right move. This was, you can see all of the fluid going through the tubes and all of the bends and kinks and bumps and, and twists in there cause that fluid to make sudden jerky changes in direction, which hurts flow a little bit, but it makes the fluid really stand out in terms of that crazy effect that it has. So I think it turned out really, really good. Now, obviously this is a Threadripper based build. So we've got a 1950X overclocked to four gigahertz and the memory's running 3000 megahertz. Couldn't get to go any faster, unfortunately, but I haven't done a lot of tweaking with it. So there's gonna be a whole nother follow-up video about performance on this thing because I just haven't had a chance to, to do enough with it yet. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I still have to do all the B-roll for this video. I still have to edit it and it's gonna be a long night, but I think it turned out really well details all the way down to the SLI bridge where we painted it gunmetal to match and then took out the guts and took out the green insert to make it glow white. Just a lot of little things. I mean, we even left the red on the motherboard because we think that almost looks like, like the heart. So there it is, guys. I'm not sure I would have done it any differently. Obviously, there's a glass side panel that goes on this and a huge thank you to Cougar for sending me special glass that I requested that was not etched with the giant Cougar logo, because I felt like that just would have taken away from this build. So huge thank you for them being willing to take their logo off of the case for me. So thank you guys for that. But I think, I think it turned out perfect in a very imperfect way, right? The insides just don't match the outsides. And that's kind of like how we are as people, right? I mean, our guts don't look like our exterior, unless you wanna, I don't know, unless you got an exoskeleton or some shit. I'm tired, I make no sense now, do I? So anyway, I'm gonna be benchmarking this and doing a performance video on this. So please sound off in the comments below and let me know what stuff you think I should be benchmarking with this. Obviously it's not a gaming chip. We'll be doing gaming, but it's not a gaming chip. So I wouldn't be expecting this to like outperform an 8700K or a 7700K because it's not a gaming chip. In fact, you put on gaming mode, you lose half your cores anyway, but that's a, like I said, conversation for another video. So I'm gonna go again, huge thank you to the sponsors, AMD, Corsair, Nvidia, Performance Dash PCs, Primo Chill, EK, I mean, Cougar. Obviously we've got a lot of people involved in this build and it turned out fantastic. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and buy my shirts.